Hello, welcome, and thank you for joining me for the session of Straight Chablis. My name is Maymata Aliya. I am a New York based wine educator, and today the focus of our discussion is going to be about the Chablis Premier Cru wines and the amazing diversity that is available at this category. Unlike the Chablis Grand Cru, which is all located entirely on the right bank, the Chablis Premier Cru are distributed across the entire Chablis wine region on both sides of the Saran River. We have 40 different Premier Cru Clima, um, and they represent a variety of elevation, exposure, orientation, um, and we cannot forget the hand of the winemaker. And so when it comes to the Premier Cru category, I really find that this is where you, the Chablis wine lover has a chance to dive deeply into the nuances and diversity that Chablis can truly offer. And to aid with today's discussion and to really fl help flesh it out, we are joined by Vincent Bertemont, who is the winemaker for La Chablisienne, that is the only co-op winery located in the Chablis wine region. It was established in 1923, so they will soon be celebrating a very important anniversary. The co-op is responsible for a quarter of the entire region's production. And Vincent, under his tutelage, is making 30 different wines from the Chablis wine region. So if there's anybody who is perfectly equipped to help guide us through today's discussion, it is Vincent. We are incredibly lucky to have him join us today. Um, we'll also be tasting four wines, as has become typical in our discussions. One of the wines is going to be from the right bank, um, and then three will be from the left bank. So without further ado, um, please allow me to uh, introduce Vincent and have him tell us a little bit about his background and how he became involved in this beautiful wine industry. So welcome, Vincent, and please tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, with pleasure. Um, so um, I'm Vincent Bartmont, and uh, I'm the winemaker of La Chablisienne uh, since, uh, since uh, 2011. Um, I'm, my background, uh, you know, is uh, I started uh, the analogy with my uh, diploma uh, of analogy. Uh, I got it in 2000 in uh, Burgundy, in Dijon. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I start uh, after my diploma, uh, I start to, to, to vinify, to, to make wine in, in a different region, uh, vineyards like Bordeaux, Alsacia, uh, and Chile also. Nice. Uh, and um, I was uh, in 2005, I was hired by a cooperative in Maconnet named Cave de Viret. Oh, sure. My Viret Clessé appellation, you know, mm -hmm. it's also Chardonnay. Uh, and I, I uh, made wine, Chardonnay wine and Viret Clessé wine during five years. And uh, yes, in 2011, I, uh, uh, I was hired by uh, La Chalisienne to, uh, to, to make the wine of La Chalisienne. I have some, uh, you know, some links with the region of uh, Chablis because I have some um, family um, uh, origin uh, in the region uh, near Chablis in the Auxerrois, uh, coulanges lavineuse Irancy. So I, I learn, uh, and uh, my first contact with these uh, these wines was in the um, with Chablis and the raids of uh, of this uh, region. Um, so it was like kind of natural, natural for me to to uh, to come back and to to work and to to have the the, the, the chance to uh, to make wine in this uh, in this area, you know. So I'm very proud to 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 have the chance to uh, to make the, the wine of uh, these beautiful wines of Chablis, you know, in the Chablisienne. I love that you had the experience with the two. Um, two ends of the, the Bourgogne region, yes. from Macon <laughs> to, to Chablis, so very different yes, exactly. discussions. Um, yeah, I mean, we've, we've talked a lot in these discussions just about the, uh, how Chablis is, uh, it's really about nuance, and, um, but to have this opportunity to really work between these two very different zones with this one great variety, I think is super, super interesting. You know, we talk, we've talked about the Petit Chablis, we've talked about Chablis, we talk about the Grand Cru, um, but today we're talking about the Premier Cru. And one of the things that really distinguishes the Premier Cru is that it is on both sides 
of the river. So you do have some premier crew on the left bank. You also have some on the right bank. In terms of the numbers, for my number nerds, we've got about, we have 40 different premier crew and they represent 15% of the production of the region. But most of us are perhaps not familiar with all 40 um, because we also have what we call the flagship klima. Um, and of that, we have 17. And so in some cases, you may have a smaller, flat, a smaller klima that may choose to either use their name or to use the name of the associated flagship klima um, instead on their label because of more recognition. So that is the case, but you do have a lot of variation. And that's one of the things that I find really, really interesting about the Premier Cruz. You do have a lot of differentiation in these 40 different klima on both sides of the bank. You have variations in orientation, elevation, and so on and so forth that really bring a tremendous amount of nuance to the wines and the um, at that level. Um, so just to start big, if you were to just give a broad differentiation between the left bank and the right bank, is there a generalization we can make about these two sides? The main difference between the left bank and right bank, I think, firstly, is uh, Simply, the, the right bank is well known, more well known than the left bank. The historical part of uh, of Chablis is the right bank because it's the, the bank of the Grand Cru, you know. And I think you you you, you can get the you see the, the the most well known premier cru of Chablis is Monte Tonnerre, Fourchaume, uh, Montmilieu, uh, and so. Uh, this is the first difference. So the, the left bank, uh, you have some famous uh, premier cru, but not so much as uh, the, I think the, the right bank. And the, the second difference is, uh, of course, the exposure. Mm -hmm. The soil is not so different. You have a lot of nuances, but the, the, the soil, the subsoil is uh, in right bank and left bank is Kim region. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, is the base of the, of the soil. And you have, of course, nuance of, uh, of the proportion of clay, of limestone, of marl, of course. Uh, but you don't have really differences, right bank soil and left bank soil. The, the, the base is chemical region. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, in terms of exposure, of uh, position of the valley, of the valley of the uh, yeah. right bank, between yeah. right bank and if you see the map, yeah. Uh, you, you can see that the, uh, the, the left bank, if you see the left bank, you can see the small valleys mm -hmm. uh, clo yeah. closed, uh, closed, closer, enfin, they are more closed than the right bank. Yeah. And the, the main exposure of, this, of the premier cru are east, south, east. Mm. And if you uh -huh. see the, the, the right bank, yeah. the, the valleys are more open. Okay. And the exposure is is uh, is quite different because you can see it's more west, south, west. west okay. Yeah. Uh, so, in in terms of uh, ripeness uh, and of maturity, uh, the in in general terms, the the left bank is colder than the right bank. So. Um, the, the the maturity of the the, the grapes uh, get their maturity before in the right bank before the, the 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 left bank. You can you can get one week of differences between the right and the the left. In terms of a generalization, we can say then the right bank usually are going to be riper, um, a little bit. Yes more opulence right and and um and they have a similar similar exposure to the grand cru if we were to make another generalization um in terms of ageability of the premier cru is there a, a, a sweet spot that you think is ideal for their consumption i see where in terms of aging the, the, the rule that is there is no rule but uh we uh, I can I can um, explain I can I think that for premier cru generally uh, uh, the, the ideal aging uh, is between five and ten years. Uh, you, you can you can wait more. You can you can we taste we taste some uh, premier cru uh, 
with uh, 20 years uh, age, but uh, the, 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 the the, the top the, of the of the expression of the wine um, in general is between this this uh, yeah four five years until uh, nine ten years it's, mm -hmm. it's a, the, the good uh, window to okay. to taste the the wine. So I would love to start tasting the wines, but I'm also going to ask you um, to give us an overview of each clima. Um, when we taste, uh, when we're going to taste the wine. So um, again, I have my map because we're going to start by, so the first two wines we're tasting are from your winery, right? From Le Chablisien. Um, mm -hmm. And it's from the 17 vintage. And the very first one we're going to taste is from Lelis. It yes. is not a flagship clima. It is one of the smaller climas. So sometimes you will not see the name um, on the label. What might they use instead of Lelis on the label, Vincent, if they don't want to Vaillon. use the flagship? They would use? Yes, Vaillon. So the flagship is Vaillon, yes. Yeah. yes. So again, you Vaillon. see it here. Um, the words that are in bold, are basically the names of the flagship clima. So within this cluster, you've got Vaillon would be the flagship, and then you've got these other sort of smaller ones that are not mm -hmm. in, in, in um, bold font. So, um, and Le yeah. is pretty much tucked right up here. Tell us about the Chablisienne. Yeah, so, so La Chablisienne is, you know, it's a cooperative. Uh, it's, uh, I think, old cooperative because we, we will celebrate uh, the 100 years old anniversary uh, soon in 23. Yeah, it's 1923, uh, right? It was established. Yeah, 19, yes, it was established in uh, 1923. So, um, so it's a cooperative important uh, role in uh, in Chablis, of course, because of uh, of this his historical part and uh, of course of the uh, of the size, because we we represent like more than one thousand hectares, one thousand two hundred hectares. That is uh, twenty-two percent of the um, appellation of uh, Chablis. Twenty-two uh, percent. Well, two twenty-two percent of uh, all the Chablis yeah. area. Yeah, I I, I read that you you produce the equivalent of a quarter of the region's production is produced. Exactly. Yeah. About yeah, exactly, exactly, and uh, and we own also uh, Chateau Grenouille. That is uh, oh, yeah. a part of the Grand Cru Grenouille. That is uh, okay. seven. Uh, uh, 0.2 hectares of uh, Grand Cru, that is uh, uh, quite uh, important. Um, and so, yeah, it's uh, it, historically, uh, you know, the size of the of the cooperative and also economically, uh, it's important because of the we have get like 270 uh, wine growers, and that, that's that's uh, that's quite important for the also the representation of the quality of uh, Chablis because uh, we we are like ambassador of uh, the, 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 the quality of Chablis. Um, and so we have a, quite a responsibility to make uh, the best wine possible. You know? Is there any other cooperative in Chablis? No, it's a unique uh, only cooperative in uh, Chablis, yeah. Okay, so well, you're yeah, the only, only one. cooperative, you're, you're making um, about a quarter of the region's production um and you're yeah. making is it 30 30 different wines a year about 30 different exactly wines? yes from everything yeah. right from yeah. petit chablis chablis from your crew and exactly from yes so so uh, you really have an amazing overview of the region. yes 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 <laughs> uh, with the representation of uh, what yeah. we can find in chablis yes yes Okay, do you want to tell us a little bit about um, about the first one that we're going to taste about the uh, the climat yep. of uh, Lelis? We saw it on the map and uh, so, so the specificities a little bit of that um, particular climat and then we can talk about yeah. the wine making. So Lelis, uh, like you, 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 you show in the map, uh, is part of uh, Vaillon. But if you see the, the map, it's... Uh, it's a little bit apart of uh, Vaillon. Yeah, I can bring because, up uh, if you so if you can... see, yeah, uh, yeah. So it's at it's at the top of the hill, and yeah. if you see Vaillon, the other climate of Vaillon is facing east, south yeah. east. Okay, but Lelis is is an exception because it's uh, 
it turns and it's facing more east north east mm -hmm. you know? and it's exactly at the top of the of the hill so it's quite different than for it's it's for the, this reason we isolate and we we make the, this wine a part of the over vallon mm -hmm. uh, because it's a i think a really different style uh, if you compare with the uh, vallon because of this uh, exposure uh, and it's um, if you if you this north east uh, exposure gives yeah so you can understand a colder uh, and a more slower of slower uh, ripeness and and give the, I think a very good a lot of finesse of, uh, of the of, of, of the wine uh, to the wine and um, and 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 you, you know you, you can find this wine we we will taste it and we will see, see if uh, if we tr if we find it uh, you have a lot of elegance uh, with this wine because of this mix of exposure mm -hmm. and of course of the of the of the soil that you have a, you can find the the Kimmer region soil of course subsoil and um, quite a bit of uh, proportion of clay uh, that is quite important and uh, mixed with the uh, uh, marl uh, and it, it 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 permits it allows the grapes to to ripe uh, slowly and uh, very balanced in a very balanced way mm -hmm. um, so i think uh, it's a good represent, very representative of the shabby styles in terms of elegance and like we say uh, tension Mm -hmm. uh, the famous tension and minerality of uh, Shabby, and um, I think it's a good uh, good example of uh, what is uh, the tension of uh, Shabby. Yeah. So, so we can taste it. <laughs> yeah. So it's so it's on the in, on what we sort of generalized as the cooler bank, and then it's yes. even a very exceptional sighting in that bank because it's a higher elevation with a different orientation because it's facing more mm -hmm. east northeast. So um, you're harvesting it. A little bit later than the yes. other, yeah, because it's a little mm -hmm. bit delayed. Yes, we wait. We have to wait a bit, uh, and the, the slower to ripe uh, to the maturity is uh, later mm -hmm. than the other. Uh, for example, if we we will take Vaillon, that is a mix, is a blend between the two clim clima, mm -hmm. and uh, it's re really riper than the least uh, clima. So it's yeah. uh, the two the two wines can can be named Bayon, yeah, but they are really different. Yeah, very really different. Yeah, no, I I I understand when when I was tasting because I did pre-taste the wines last night. Um, I I really understand why you would choose to not put that as a as a Bayon and keep it as a. Mm. So we sort of talked about the seventeen. It's sort of very classic vintage. Um. And this is from that sort of cooler clima. So in terms of winemaking, can you tell us a little bit about the winemaking in terms of, you know, what, what are you fermenting in? Are you using any any wood? Is it new? Is it old? Um, yeah, we, we use a lot. It's a, for, for this, this premier cru, it's a very classic uh, hmm. uh, Chardonnay vinification. Uh, we, we, we start the, the fermentation in a um, in tank, in stainless steel tank, and we put a part of the, of the, of the must in oak. Uh, alors, for Lelis, uh, we, we put, not a part, we put all the, the, the must in the, in the oak to, to end the fermentation, um, all the fermentation, alcoholic, malolactic fermentation, Go through the, the in, in the oak, but no new oak. Huh? It's uh, only uh, four, five, six years old oak. Okay. And the idea is not to, to, to have a lot of uh, oak aromas, is uh, to let the, the wine express. And especially in Chabi, it's important to, 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 uh, to let the, the minerality express and uh, not to. to, to uh, Mark the, 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 the oak, the oak aromas too much. Right. Um, especially with Lelis, because you have a lot of finesse, you know, this 
elegant yeah. uh, aromas. So with the oak, it's very dangerous. And uh, so we use only old oaks, but we use uh, during the unification for, for this wine. And so you, I is... think you, you, you can smell it a, a bit. Yeah, a little bit, but it's, um, it's really integrated. Um, so you're fermenting and maturing in neutral oak effectively. I, I certainly get the oak there, but I get a lot of really pretty sort of citrus notes and yes, exactly. Like apple, mm. some kind of more apple. green fruit and green mm -hmm. apple, some herbal notes. Almost getting a little bit of uh, some floral. Or... Not massive. Uh, the, the mouse is not so massive, but it's very elegant. The cure, uh, like don't like say dentelle. Mm -hmm. Lace. Say that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the lace. And it's very persistent. It's very persistent. Yes, exactly, it's right. not a wow, but it's a it's a very nice long persistence mm. on the wine. Very, okay. very pretty. I really like this. I, I, I like this Klima very much, and I like this wine very much. We want to move on to the next wine, uh, which is the from the Forcham. Let's talk about Forcham. So Forcham, it is up here. This is Forcham. Right. So you can again we can oh, yeah. sort of see that this really very very different orientation that we've got going on here right um it's a much more open klima it's really large really a big big one the big um in terms of area yeah for show uh is uh maybe the the, uh, the biggest uh, premier cru in terms of hectares and uh, maybe you have a diversity of uh, klima yeah so yeah it's, it's the map very important. You should see uh, you have Clima like uh, Côte de Fontenay, Vopulan, Lomor, Voloran. So those uh, are the, the, the ah. flagship, the, the ones that could use Farsham as their flagship, yes. right? So, uh, yeah, this this is the, the Clima that, yes, exactly. Yeah. Lomor. So in, in La Chabizienne, La Chabizienne, La Chabizienne uh, we, we have three, we have three cuvées of Farsham. Uh, we taste now the Farsham. Uh, that is a blend, mainly the blend, uh, the blend of the flagship for Chaume and some Vopulan and some Côte de Fontenay. If you see the for Chaume, you, 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 you talk about it, it's open valley. Uh, you can see the, the exposure is like south, southwest. So you can imagine that the, the, the maturity of the grape. Uh, is uh, is quicker than the, for example, Lilith that we tasted before. So it's, it's like more um, sunny, say sunny premier cru, mm -hmm. more uh, mm -hmm. war warmer premier cru uh, sure. with a uh, uh, roundness, uh, very different style of uh, premier cru, uh, and also the the soil. We have also the the Kimmer region. But uh, if you compare with uh, other uh, premier cru, it's quite uh, quite different between the pro uh, if you if you talk about the proportion of clay limestone and uh, and the um, I would say the uh, the profondeur uh, yeah. the, the depth uh, the depth of the of the soil. Uh, so it, it, it's uh, it's re really um, very appealing uh, premier cru uh, and. Um, uh, with a um, warm side, uh, mm -hmm. you have the minerality, but if you you taste it like the seventeen, it's quite young. Uh, it's very uh, seducing, very appealing, and uh, round, and uh, with uh, quite um, aromas, but aromas like a little bit of exotic aromas and mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, mature mature aromas. Yeah. Uh, so you have a, it's a very different kind of expression of uh, Chablis. You know? Yeah, yeah. Do you harvest um, at, uh, a little bit earlier for some? Yes, so alors, 17. Normally, we, we, we uh, for some is one of the first premier cru we, we harvest. The, um, it's, it's ripe, it's, the maturity arrives really quick. If, if mm -hmm. we wait too much, uh, so we, we can be uh, uh, over uh, over ripening okay, over, over ripening we quick, really um, we are rapidly and and um, it, it can 
can get a lot of um, very, I say, um, too much roundness, too much uh, mm -hmm. maturity. So we to keep the freshness because we, we get the freshness. Uh, we have to, to harvest early in the during the vintage during the harvest. Uh, and if if we don't do that. Uh, it can can be um, too much, <laughs> too much warm, too yeah, much, uh, yeah. uh, too much body, too much, uh, too much wine, and we 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 lost the the, the finesse of Chablis. Yeah, uh, I prefer to do the malolactic to stabilize the wine to get the aromas of the malolactic uh, fermentation because the the, tra the let's say the transformation of the of the aromas are very important with the malolactic. Fermentation, and uh, without this fermentation, uh, I think the the wine for for Chablis and for Chardonnay, for me, uh, the wine is not complete. It's not uh, mm -hmm. not doesn't get his his right maturity. His, yeah, yeah, right expression. Yeah. It's, it's my uh, opinion. Yeah, it, it's really lovely. I mean, you definitely get a different sense in this wine. You definitely get a different. Um, a different aromatic spectrum. Um, it's a little bit more exotic, even in its in its uh, in its aromas. Um, but you know, it still has beautiful acidity and a beautiful persistence. Um, so yeah, I think that it's a it's a really beautiful wine. And you get 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 also some oak in this uh, wine, but uh, this is part you have like. In this one, in this 17, uh, for sure, you have like 20% of oak. And here you have a little a little part of new oak. Newer, yeah, I was going to total, ask you about that. Uh, yes. So, so is it new? Is it, uh, is it first use or um, first use new oak? Yes. Or, yeah, 20%. New and oak, are you from like, I don't know. It's, if I, 20%, it's, it's not 20% of new oak, it's 20% it's, uh, of oak oh, and you have uh, 20, 20, like uh, four percent of New York. Okay. Uh, inside this uh, twenty percent, you know. Okay. And you the the rest is uh, uh, you have a uh, one year old, uh, two years, and three years old oak. Uh, it's a mix of uh, age. And again, you're fermenting in the oak. It's in total. It's twenty. Yes. Yes. Always. The... Always we ferment. Yes. Mm. It's important to to have the contact. With the oak at the start of the fermentation, yeah, to to integrate integrate the the, the oak aromas, and to have the best contact between uh, the, mm. the wine and the yeah, then it doesn't oak. feel like an overlay. You have better integration between the two. Yes, I want to precise. We don't do a batonnage. Uh, we talk about oak. We oh, don't yeah. do batonnage. Uh, you can uh, we we let the the the, the leaves. Uh, in the, in the barrel and uh, we don't move the leaves uh, every week or every uh, let's say I don't know. It, it, so you're let, keeping uh, the wine the on the leaves but you're not doing the yes. massage and stirring it mm. and the reason to no. do to keep it on the leaves is what alors is to uh, one when one side and one side we is to stabilize because it's a factor of uh, stabilization to yeah. let the, the wine on the lease. And uh, is, you have um, an ex exchange between the uh, wines and lease that is very important. And the lease, the dead uh, yeast, mm -hmm. some, they are mm -hmm. dead yeast, they, they, um, say they, uh, they give a lot of um, uh, elements, uh, aromas, uh, uh, element of uh, for for the structure of the of the wine, yeah. and more you let the, 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 the wine on the lees, more you you get all these elements that stabilize and change the wine in the in the good in the good way, um, and it's it's uh, for me it's a way to the best way finally to to express the the character of the wine as the minerality character of the wine. Yeah. Let's move on to our. Uh, we're going back across the river now, and we're uh, we're leaving La Chablisienne, and we're we're going to taste some wines from a uh, a family winery called the Domaine Guy Robin, 
um, a fee. And now we're tasting two wines from the 2018. So we said we're going to start with the uh, Vaillant. So let's, uh, let's look at Vaillant. So we're back on the left bank. And this is the yes. Vaillant. And it's a, again, it's a pretty important, um, one of the more important Clima, would you say, on the left bank? Um, on the left yes. Hand. Yeah. yeah. And mm. it's quite spread out. And has not as important as for sure, but it's quite important. Yeah. It ha- and it has a lot of um, also kind of the, the smaller um, clima around it. So in terms of, um, and I'm going to do this because sometimes it's a little bit easier to see it on the, uh, on the flat map. So now we're, um, we are here. So this is Vaillant. So um, what can you tell us about the Vaillant clima? Uh, like you said, Vaillon uh, has a numbers of clima. Uh, maybe uh, if you compare with Forshom, maybe you find the, the most va- variety of uh, clima. It's a good example of what is an, the exception uh, of uh, the left bank uh, rules when we explained before. Uh, because Vaillon is uh, as uh, this, the, this southeast east uh, exposure yeah but if you if you see the soil if you see the, the especially the soil that is uh, like a shallow soil is a good uh, proportion of uh, of clay and that uh, mix marl clay and limestone that warm up really fast yeah um, so we talk about the, 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 the less bank that the, the style is more, more freshness, or colder. And Vaillon is not <laughs> like not so this, much. I think. <laughs> yeah, not so much, not so yeah. much. And uh, it can be dangerous. Vaillon can be dangerous because it can ripe really fast, really. Yeah. So we have to be really uh, to, to see and to, to watch the maturity of, uh, of the grapes. Uh, because you can be overripe really fast with the yeah. Bayon. So uh, the, the wine we taste now is, uh, I, well, like I, I read, is a blend of Melino and Bunion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That are two clima of Vaillon. Yeah. And they are at the bottom of the valley of uh, Vaillon. Yeah, so they're, uh, they're here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's, here's so I think it's, and then it's like, down here. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, uh, and this part is especially warm, uh, ripe really fast, and, uh, and it gives, and we'll test it, uh, some this with rounder and uh, uh, kind of, uh, it's not kind of for show, but you are maybe uh, more. Uh, uh, for sure, my idea, then, uh, yeah. then the, you, you can, well, the, wine, the wine you can find in the left bank. Uh, so it's, it's warmer, yeah. in term, general term, warmer uh, left bank uh, clima than the other uh, flagship or clima that we find in, uh, in this bank. No. On the left, but yeah. Yeah, it definitely yeah. has more opulence, you know, when, when, yes, exactly. Uh, then. And then, then for example, Lelise, and of course, I mean, we're talking about, you know, two different vintages as well, um, but you definitely get this warmer. Um, and, you know, I was wondering, and I'm, again, you know, I'm always, when, when I taste these wines and I don't necessarily always know the specificities, but I was thinking it speaks to me of sort of more clay moral soils, um, whereas Lelise maybe is a little bit sort of shallower soil. So, I'm, and you were saying that it's a little bit more on the clay. It, it's got this kind of a little bit more roundness, a little bit more, um, not the same tension, um, and but really, I mean, delicious, but it, but a, a, a very different expression. It's very long, round, uh, painting. Yeah. Um, but you you have the, at the at the end this freshness and the, the minerality yeah. that it gives a, a touch of um, it's a, it's a very seducing wine. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Yeah, it's very uh, charming. Very it's very charming and very seductive. Charming, exactly. Yeah. Uh, charming seductive. and seductive. Mm-hmm. And it's um, it's also wine that you know, I, it sort of takes me, um, and it's, it's probably true for all of them, but it takes me in the direction of food pretty quickly. 
Um, you know, I just think I taste that wine. Ah, yes. hmm, I want to have food now, you know. Well, let's talk about food with this wine. What would you, um, you know, what would you have at, at home if you were having your bottle of Bayon? What would you, um, what would you make with this wine? I don't, um, uh, yes. You don't cook. Can, <laughs> uh, I, 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 like, I like to see it sometimes. Yeah, yes, I cook. I cook. Okay. No, but you know, you know, some fish, of my fatal fish, uh, some, some lobster. Yeah, I was I was thinking, you know, I would want like a, a lobster with some drawn butter or, you know, something or even yes, scallops. Yes, I love exactly. scallops. Um, or I, I was having the other day like a scallop ceviche with a mango salsa. And I was thinking like, mm, that would be really nice with that. Because uh, well, there's yes, a certain exactly. generosity, but then the acidity sort of brings you back. Mm. So I think, you know, okay. that would be a really nice something with with this. Because again, there's a little bit of kind of an exoticness to this wine. Um, and I yes, yeah. with with more like shellfish or more fatty fish, it would be really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Manual harvest, alcoholic, alcoholic and malolactic fermentation in oak barrels, 10% new. Um, and then it yep. stays on the lease 10 months. So that's, I mean, that's that's pretty, would it be fair to say, Vincent, that, in terms of the winemaking in Chablis, there isn't a lot of d variation. I mean, would it be dangerous to say that? Or, I mean, I, fi I find that most are doing malolactic, most are doing some, you know, time on mm. lease, but not lease stirring. Mostly it's used oak, if there's oak, or it's stainless steel for yes. the more like petit Chablis, and then some mm. used oak. Um, but it's not yeah, an area yeah. where the wine making is what's leading. It's really, it's no, no. Enfin, it's it's factor. leading. It, it, the, the, you have you, you find some main dif I mean, some differences between uh, estates between a producer uh, in terms of um, we talk about the the, the aging on lease yeah. and. Uh, um, this time uh, can can you can you can find really between uh, different producer uh, different um, uh, say uh, time uh, to do this uh, aging okay. uh, between uh, two months three months and uh, in la chabienne we for some premier cru grand cru it can be uh, 15 months uh, and you you have a big variability, I think. Enfin, big. You have variability in in terms of time of aging uh, between the producer. Uh, you have producer that take only um, for premier cru or grand cru only eight nine months to to age, and other it's 15, 16. and also the part of O can be very different. Okay. You have producer in Chablis that don't use any oak right yeah only the uh, tank and stainless steel tank no oak other on a lot of oak and uh, some producer like us it's like between <laughs> some balance, oak okay. but not yeah. a balance um but the, well, the main difference i think is the the, the, the time of uh, aging you know okay. takes the time of aging and um, it can depends, of course, also uh, with uh, it can uh, really uh, be variable with the volume of a vintage. Uh, if you have a low volume uh, with a vintage, uh, with, for some producer, it can be a problem to age a long time on lease because they need the, the wine uh, they need before to, get it know, out. to commercial. Yeah, makes sense. So, um, okay, well, we need to. Um move on to our last wine yes um which mm -hmm. is the moma and again we're with the same uh, so with the same vintage 2018 same producer so Robin. um and this is now we are still on the left bank so mom here is we're back to our map so now we are in moma again it's a pretty pretty kind of a long valley yes. you know, I, I i say usually also the the names of the clima if it's a with a vaillon like it's a valley more moment it's more of a mound uh, like mont du milieu yes. or, uh, Monte de Tonnerre. so it gives you a bit of a an idea of of the clima yes um, mm -hmm. but again let's kind of put it on this flat map so now yep. we are 
we are down here. Mm -hmm. So what are the some of the typicities of uh, Montmartre? So it's a bit of a more hilly, um, you know, clima. And we are once yes. again on the, on the left bank. And um, in terms of, uh, I mean, it's not that far from Vaillon. So if you were to compare it maybe to something to Vaillon, how would, um, what would be some of the main differences that you would be looking for? Alors, uh, yes, MoMA is quite different because it's more, uh, the approach is more, um, say, it gets more typicity uh, and more connection with the uh, idea of the, what is the left bank premier cru. Mm -hmm. um, because in general, it can be um, uh, considered like a, a colder premier cru. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you see the, the, the map, you, you can see the, the, uh, the slope is, uh, is, you have a gentle slope. If you compare with Bayon, you have a mm -hmm. steeper uh, slope. And yeah, a moment, gentle yeah. slope, uh, very open valley with this facing also the exposure is like east, south, east. Yeah. You know? And so you, you can see. It's northeast and, and southeast. Yes, sort exactly. Of, like, it goes, so, yeah, right. both orientations, yeah. And and because of the of the soil uh, and uh, like we said, the proportion of clay and the limestone, marl, uh, especially if you are in uh, at the bottom of the the premier cru moment that is named Buteau, mm -hmm. you have a lot of of, of uh, different type of clay uh, mm -hmm. uh, with a shallow soil and it, it, it gives um, yeah, yeah. a different maturity, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a uh, buto. Uh, yeah. And I think with the, the wine we taste, uh, the, the moment we taste as a, a part of uh, buto, it's a, it's a blend between buto and uh, moment. And uh, the, other, the other clima is forêt mm -hmm. of uh, moment. So you have three uh, clima, so not so much as the uh, vaillon. You have so, less yeah. uh, climate so, yeah here so again like try yeah. to bring it so yeah so you don't you don't have you see you don't have the variety of uh, climate that you have in Vaillon mm -hmm. uh, but you have three uh, different uh, climate that get their own uh, character and I think in this one uh, we get this uh, buto touch that is very, really important because I think in moment it is the colder part in uh, of moment yeah and uh, it's uh, in, uh, a, in a vintage like 18 uh, that is warm we say warm vintage uh, mm -hmm. it's interesting because it, it gives a lot of freshness of the for uh, at, uh, at this wine at this yeah. one so um, i think it's very interesting uh, to have this this uh, buto and you can find a lot of uh, producers a lot you can find some producer that uh, isolate uh, buto Mm -hmm. uh, because like like Lelys for Vaillon, uh, like other Premier Cru, or Voleron for Fouchoum, uh, it's a really different style of, uh, of wine yeah. uh, inside the, the same uh, the same Premier Cru. So yeah, really, yeah, I think yeah. it's really, really interesting. Yeah, again, you know, it's always, it's it's so interesting to how different these two wines are. Um, and I think to me, if I was in a, let's say if I was in a blind tasting, I would have a harder time putting Veillon on the left bank, but I would put this on the left bank more easily. Yes, exactly. Right. Um, mm -hmm. It sort of puts me back in this in this tension that I expect on the left bank more. Um, yeah. It's a little bit greener. Um, the acidity is a little bit more present. Um, and I, you know, again, I mean, I I find it fascinating because you know we sort of always I keep saying you know we're still with the same grape. We're not that far. I mean, what is the distance from? If you're I, trying to get from like Moma. Very, very near, near uh, from some, yeah. maybe one or two, uh, it's a valley. So it's, uh, no, it's uh, nothing, <laughs> nothing but a uh, lot of difference. I guess for me, a big difference between the Vaillant and the Moma is, is structural. Um, it's, exactly. Yeah, it's kind of the, the tension that I'm getting on this one that tension, I, I have. Mm, mm. Sort of in Vaillant was a, like more generous and open, but beautiful. Both so, of them really, really lovely wines. Maybe with some classic oyster or yeah. shellfish. Can we... 
Very nice. Yeah, this one I'm sort of <laughs> more in that in that you know sort of like lemon, more like uh, oyster, more briny, more maybe yes. something with like lemon, um, you know, and uh, maybe something with a little bit of garlic. <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, yes, yeah, yes, 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 perfect. To get angry. Um, but yeah, really, really. Um, very, very nice wines. Do, do you know the domaine, the domaine uh, Guirobin? Do you know uh, the domaine? Have you? Yeah, a little bit. Not not so much, but uh, yes, I uh, I tasted some uh, some of the, the wines, and uh, it's a quite a um, nice estate in terms of um, of quality of the, the wines, and the, uh, they they get a very good, nice variety of premier cru and uh, grand cru. It's I think twenty hectares, so it's. Yeah. Uh, for Chablis, it's uh, quite big. Uh, quite impressive, producer. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and it's a historical one. Yeah, yeah. I was reading uh, a little bit about them. Um, yeah, yeah and I think now the the, the 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 children are more involved and taking over, and uh, yeah. Yeah, which is always lovely. I think it's gorgeous right now. But you know, and if you were to project uh, ageability on this wine, would you? What would you say its window is? I mean, we know we you oh, said uh, five to ten years. Um, yes, but for this one especially, um, I think you have a good structure and the structure to age well. And uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, without problem, uh, five, four, five years without problem. But I think more uh, yeah. it can uh, age. Uh, especially uh, that yeah. moment, I'm thinking it has uh, it has some nice. Really good potential. Yeah. Maybe uh, if you compare with Vaillon, maybe um, I think Moment get uh, best potential than uh, Vaillon. Uh, Vaillon, yeah, yeah. I was I was thinking the same thing. Well, thank you so 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 much for uh, for the time, Vincent. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, I know yeah. it's an incredibly busy time for you. Right. And um, but this is nice. hugely, hugely uh, informative and educational. So I really appreciate you. you taking the time to do yeah, this. Me too. It was Thank a pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs>